everybody, welcome to another edition of Five Questions with the Paulists. Today, oh, alma mater Fordham. You know, I went to Fordham University in New York, and so did this guy, who is the pastoral associate and the director of the Order of Christian Initiation for Adults at the Mother House, St. Paul the Apostle in New York, which is right across the street from Fordham Lincoln Center, in case you didn't know. And uh, it's Dave De La Fuente. And Dave, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. It's great to be here. Thanks. Fordham represents, of course. St. Paul <laughs> represent too. That's great. Well, let's get right into it. Like question one, uh, what's a trend in the church right now that gives you a lot of hope? I, I would say the so there's collectively, it's, it's about the signs of renewal and new life. And so I'm going to cheat a little bit, if that's okay, where the trend is two things. One is this, this, uh, this, dynamic called the ecclesial movements that have proliferated in the church. Um, I'm kind of tied to one of them and, and continue to come back to that spirituality and live into it. And the other, and this one is definitely OCIA related, baptisms are up this year. They're up this year in this country. They were up by a huge, huge margin at St. Paul's. Um, in France, apparently everyone's getting baptized at this point in time. And so there, that, that tells us that there's something happening and people are finding God, they're finding meaning and it's it's a sign of life. And I think that trend's going to continue, um, which is really wonderful. Yeah, it was great watching the live stream from St. Paul's uh, from here in Cleveland and, and looking at the vast number of people that we they had go through OCIA this year. Yeah. So question two, let's go the opposite way. What, what, what's a trend in the church right now that worries you? Definitely, it's it's the sense of polarization, and of course, there's there's always going to be space for you know critical dialogue, and we need that. But there is really a sense that you know the church, which should be a family under God, um, it's 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 it feels it feels more um, confrontational. It feels like it's us versus them. It's something that uh, hasn't. It's not new to Catholicism, and it's not new to Christianity. But I think we feel it more acutely than we used to. And among the things that that you know in, in, that worry me about it are that we're all there. There's something that really unites all of us, and when it's no longer perceptible, um, and it's faith in God, it's the reality of Jesus, it's the power of the Holy Spirit, and it's the reality that God works in the church. Um, when that no longer feels tangible, that means that we don't have hope. And if we don't have hope, then something's amiss, right? So. That's something that I'm definitely very worried about. I know the policies are very worried about, and there's all of the inflections of polarization too that we need to know. You know, the isms, racism, sexism, um, you know, and 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 all of them that that are showing that there's a there's a real challenge that the church is facing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, question three: uh, What's one tangible thing that the church should do to invite back parishioners who never returned after the COVID pandemic? Uh, this is a this is a, a fun and, and challenging question in one way because at St. Paul's we have this amazing birch church you know ministry and for a lot of people and, and actually maybe kind of like uh, an aspiring athlete or in, in my past life I go back and I watch the video and I see how did how did how did it come across and yeah. you know how how did it all go but I also pray with you know the replay so to speak of of all of the liturgies that we we go through. Um, and so there's something really powerful and amazing that's part of this. At the same time, there is also the sense, and this is something I've reinforced with my now newly initiated Catholics this year, like, you got to be there. Um, and if it's once a year, it's better than zero. Uh, and I think the thing that really brought it home for me was we had a wonderful Pentecost weekend, ordination of two New Paulist priests, Pentecost mass itself. We had a parish party. And I think the tangible invitation is like, we need something incarnational like that again. We need barbecues again. We need parish parties. We need festivals. And uh, the thing that deeply impressed me at St. Paul's is, you know, we're we're celebrating, we're dancing, we're we're joshing each other um, and, and playing fun games. And then there was a powerful moment of blessing and prayer. Mm -hmm. And so to to go from from line dancing to to intense prayer, right? That that to me is in a lot of ways is what church should look like. And that's something that I want every Catholic out there to come back to and experience. Um, and, and hopefully more churches can do that to invite people back um, as much as they can be there. I should tell Father Eric Andrews, I said he should bring back the old street fair that we used to do at St. Paul the Apostles, right on, we would cordon off 60th Street. 
uh, all that would be on the, the Fordham side there. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the neighborhood would too. For sure. And then question four, uh, what author or speaker do you recommend uh, for new Catholics to read or listen to? If you don't mind, I'm going to cheat on this one too, because I, <laughs> I I was thinking about this one and, and it's like, where do I even start? Uh, the there's two who come to mind right now, um, and especially because I'm thinking about North American context, et cetera. Uh, Dorothy Day, oh, um, sure. someone who uh, I got to, you know, her, her writings I got to encounter as an undergrad at Fordham. The New York City connection was really live. I, I feel the pull to come back to her because of the way that she exemplified, like, pray hard, advocate hard. They both go hand in hand. And it comes back to the second question, right, in terms of polarization. I think she's a figure who can speak across the divides in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so reading her, The Long Loneliness for sure, and right now I'm, I'm starting to go through um, some of her letters um, and seeing all the richness of her, of her thought and her spirituality there, definitely that, uh, definitely Dorothy Day. Um, with my catechumens, um, catechumenate ministry, we've been experimenting with having people sit with uh, Pope Francis's interview in America Magazine, A Big Heart Open to God. And I, I keep recommending it to all the Catholics I run into. And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of shocked that, that not enough, not as many people know about it as, as one would hope. It's really powerful. And it's, it's actually, it's worked really well in terms of, uh, hey, let's, you know, is this helping you confirm your decision? Is the Catholic Church right for you? Um, is this, is this resonating with you? And it seems like it's really, you know, impacting the lives and spiritualities of the people that I'm ministering to. And so it certainly has, it's something I come back to all the time, at least once a year, and I still cry when I read it. So A Big Heart Open to God by Pope Francis has to get a mention too. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the best things he, he's ever done is is just sit down for that interview. And um, it really spoke to me personally as well. So great. Mm -hmm. And finally, question five. It's a zombie apocalypse. And so who are three saints that you would like fighting on your side against the zombies? I, I'm so excited for this question. I talked about it with my wife, Adrian, beforehand. And uh, so the three are this, um, St. Paul the Apostle. There's really interesting recent scholarship that suggests that he probably knew how to box uh -huh. um, based off of, he did, he, he, he used the metaphor of like, a, you know, I'm, I'm with purpose, not shadow boxing. That's not accidental. And we knew that we know that he's a feisty dude. So who, you know, uh, of course you'd want him uh, on your zombie apocalypse team. Um, Dorothy Day is is number two, partly because I think I want to hold out hope that uh, nonviolent resistance makes a difference. Ah, yeah. And and she's also a solidarity person, right? And so if you're if we're looking to survive, it's never just individuals. You need community, and so you need Dorothy Day. Now, third, it's a zombie apocalypse. So you need a spiritual director, St. Ignatius Loyola, number <laughs> three on the team. Um, and he knew how to fight too. So if, if push comes to shove, pun intended, um, <laughs> good person to have on the team, but above all, someone who can help us see the bigger picture. Absolutely. As a spiritual director, I love that last one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me too. And I, I joked with my wife when we were going through the last season of Game of Thrones, like, well, you could say this for any season. It's like, if people kept appointments with their spiritual directors, things would have worked out differently in Game of Thrones. That's true. That's <laughs> yeah. Dude, this has been so much fun. So uh, thanks for joining us and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it will just looks so marvelous uh, at the Easter Vigil this year at St. Paul the Apostle and good luck in your doctoral work at, at Fordham as well. Thank you. Pray for me as Pope Francis says. <laughs> right, and don't forget, right? Yeah, definitely. So this has been Five Questions with Paulus. I'm Deacon Mike Hayes. He's Dave De La Fuente, and we'll see you all again next time.